Hey, I'm Brian Goulet of the Goulet Pen Company, and I'm here to share with you what are the top five fountain pen inks that I tend to use on a regular basis. This is by no means saying that these are the best inks available or that they're gonna be the best for you or anyone else, but they are the ones that I have just kind of narrowed down through my own natural selection over the last several years and the ones that I tend to put in my pens the most often. So I'm gonna introduce them to you and tell you why I like them so much. Here they are, my top five favorite fountain pen inks. So here are my five favorite inks in no particular order. I don't have a real pecking order of my inks. I tend to use all different colors all the time. I switch them out and you know, I'm, I'm, an, I'm a serial ink sampler. I just love to test out different colors. That's a lot of the appeal that I find with fountain pens. It has been ever since I first got into them, still continues to be that way to this day. So that said, I'm just gonna share with you the five that I tend to gravitate towards the most on a regular basis. I have full bottles of these colors, which is kind of rare because like I said, I ink sample like crazy. But uh, the first one that I have to get into here is Noodler's Black. Noodler's Black is kind of just an old standby. As a general rule, I'm not a huge fan of black inks. There are a ton of them out there. I think I've had upwards of 50 different black inks in my store at one time. That said, you know, what makes it 50 different colors? I don't really know. Sometimes there are property differences. Sometimes there are slight differences in color and all that. I don't really analyze all that too much. For me, Noodler's Black is just kind of the standard for black inks. It's got permanent qualities to it. It's very, very waterproof, very permanent. As long as you're using on a cellulose-based paper, that ink is not going anywhere performs well in all my pens, and a lot of people have experience with it, which for me, as a blogger, as a reviewer of fountain pen stuff, comes in really handy because it's kind of a good standard for everybody to relate to. So I have standardized it for my nib nook, which is my tool that I have on gouletpens.com that I have written uh, writing samples of every single pen and nib combination that I carry in my store. Um, that's what that's the ink that I use as the standard for comparison So I have probably more experience with that ink than I do with any other one And whenever I need a black ink whenever I need an ink with really really permanent qualities Noodler's black is my standby Another ink that I absolutely love and hate at the same time is Dimene Majestic Blue now for those of you who have read about the legendary Parker Penman Sapphire. In my opinion, this ink is very, very close in color to the Parker Penman Sapphire. Now, Penman Sapphire is one of those inks that was only around for a few years, but it's got legendary status. This was like 20 years ago, maybe even more. I don't know exactly how long it's, it's been out, but it's still got legendary status. And because of that, it tends to vary quite a bit in terms of what people actually remember the color being. And any older bottles you might have of this color are probably a little bit different than what they were when the bottle was actually created. But it, I have a bottle of Penman Sapphire and the Dimey Majestic Blue is the closest match to it that I have ever seen. So that said, uh, Majestic Blue is one of my favorite colors of all time. It's a deep, dark, saturated blue, really dark blue, and it has this heavy red sheen to it that almost kind of gives it a little, not a purpley color, but it gives it this really extra dimension to the ink that you just don't get in most other inks. Now, there are a couple others that are similar to it. Um, Private Reserve Electric DC Blue is kind of close. Uh, and so is Noodler's Ottoman Azure. But I find that Majestic Blue, there is just no replacement for it. I tend to use it in finer nibs, uh, but if I really wanna dump it on in italic or something like that, you know, it really has that sheen come out. Now I will say that it smears like crazy. It takes forever to dry if you're using it on Clairefontaine Rodeo or something else that's really ink resistant. And if you're using it in a really humid environment, just forget it. It's gonna smear and stuff like crazy. You're gonna get it all over your fingers. But you know what? Even still, I love this ink to death. If you've ever watched one of my videos where I've used a flex pen or oftentimes an italic nib, 
uh, you'll see that I have used Noodler's Apache Sunset quite a bit. I just, I'm crazy about that ink. Not particularly because of the color necessarily, but because of the colors that that ink can put out. Depending on how wet or dry that ink is being put on, it can be anywhere from a lighter yellow color to a bright orange to a dark red. It really depends on how much ink is being put on the page, how wide a swath is being put. It's really crazy how much that ink can vary in color. And for that reason, I just think it's the coolest thing. I find it to be generally low maintenance in the pens, uh, pretty easy to clean out. And so I tend to use it a lot in my flex nibs, in my italic nibs, to really get that deep, saturated, crazy color variation that you can find with very few other inks. Most other inks that have a heavy saturation will be just a lighter shade of that color to a darker shade. But this one is one that more drastically than any other ink I've used will actually change colors. So for that reason, Apache Sunset is definitely in my top five. This next ink I have a deeper connection to than just a matter of the color choice or its properties. Uh, Noodler's Liberty's Elysium is an ink that I actually worked in collaboration with Nathan Tardif of Noodler's Ink uh, to design. And uh, the inspiration behind the ink was a follow-up to my initial uh, exclusive ink that I developed, Noodler's Purple Heart. That was an ink that was based off of George Washington and the badge of military merit. I really wanted to continue the kind of tradition of the Founding Fathers, Virginia-based uh, theme that I had done with George Washington and I have kind of a connection to Patrick Henry uh, because I went to Patrick Henry High School. I live just a matter of miles away from Scotchtown and so I actually ride my bike through that area all the time and so uh, I think it's really cool the whole story and there's so much Virginia history right around where I'm located and where I grew up so I really wanted a Patrick Henry based ink. I wanted something around that. And also one of my favorite Noodler's colors was Noodler's Blue. I'd been using it in my Custom 74 with the blue tint uh, for, uh, you know, about a year or a year and a half before that ink uh, came out. So when I told Nathan, hey, look, I love Patrick Henry. I love Noodler's Blue. I would really love something like it, but with permanent qualities, especially because, you know, give me liberty or give me death. Uh, you want to talk about permanence and and uh, you know, being steadfast in your ink. Uh, so Nathan kind of took that, ran with it, put some other themes in there with Nathan Hale, um, and um, just really kind of ran with the whole uh, theme. And he actually came up with the name Liberty's Elysium, and I just thought that was awesome for the purpose. So it was really a collaborative effort. We went back and forth several times about the colors and properties and stuff. And even though uh, the permanence of this ink is not completely waterproof such as Noodler's Black or some of the other ones, it definitely has that bulletproof permanent component to it so that if you're putting it on the cellulose-based papers, you will never truly be able to wash that ink away. So because of the, the meaning behind that ink, the shade of that blue and the permanent qualities, Noodler's Libertas Elysium is, is absolutely one of my favorite inks. Diamine Red Dragon is also one of my favorite inks. There's a lot of other really good inks out there, and honestly, I don't know why I'm so attracted to Red Dragon. It's a kind of thing that I just inked, when I inked it up for the first time, it just really stood out to me, and I just really fell in love with the ink. And Diamond even has several other reds, like Oxblood and Matador, that are very similar to this color, but for whatever reason, Red Dragon just really sticks out to me. I don't know, I think the name's kind of cool, and just the particular shade of red that this has, I really like. It's a pretty darn saturated color. It's a fairly dark red, not, not real dark. Doesn't really have any brown to it. It's a fairly pure red, just very dark and saturated. Doesn't really shade a lot. So I tend to use it in some of my finer nibs. It's got kind of a permanent home here in my Pilot Metropolitan. Uh, and I just, I really like using this ink. I don't know why. I don't do a lot of corrections or anything like that. I don't, it's not really that it. Uh, I just use it kind of for my own personal use and taking notes and stuff like that. So really for no other reason than I just really like that ink. I tend to use it a lot. And so just naturally it's become one of my favorites. 
Now, I'm sure that you have your own opinions about what your top five favorite inks are, and I would actually really love to hear them. If you could post some of your favorites on this video in the comments on Ink Nouveau or on YouTube, or if you could uh, post on Facebook or Twitter with Goulet Pens, uh, I would really love to hear what you have as your favorite choices. These are just purely mine, purely opinion-based. It's absolutely not intended to try to sell you on any of these inks or anything. I just thought that maybe you would like to hear from my own experience, what are some of the ones that stand out to me based on my personal opinions. So thanks so much for watching this video and for spending time with me today. And as always, right on.